we would like to calculate galaxy motion and redshift z value for the Sombrero Galaxy. Here's an image of the Sombrero Galaxy as viewed from the Hubble Space Telescope. We are given an H alpha line, which is observed to be at a wavelength of 6585.22 angstroms. The same wavelength line measured in the laboratory is at a wavelength of 6562.8 angstroms. From these two wavelengths, we want to determine A, the redshift parameter Z, B, the velocity of the galaxy in units of kilometers per second, and C, the galaxy's motion towards or away from us. Let's take a look at this galaxy. We're standing at the Hubble Space Telescope and we're looking at this galaxy. This galaxy has a spiral arm that is rotating towards us, and it has a spiral arm that's rotating away from us. So what we want to do is we want to point our telescope in the direction of one of the spiral arms, and we want to measure its radial velocity in units of kilometers per second. To measure the radial velocity, which is the speed of the object moving towards or away from us, we need to know the shift in the wavelength of any particular line. In this particular case, we're going to focus our telescope and look for the H alpha line in the spiral arm. We find the H alpha line observed at 6585.22 angstroms, and in the lab it's measured at 6562.8 angstroms. So we need to determine the shift in this wavelength relative to the laboratory wavelength, which will tell us our z value and our radial velocity value. So let's go ahead and substitute in. We have z is equal to delta lambda over lambda, which is equal to lambda observed minus lambda in the lab divided by lambda in the lab. Now lambda observed is 6585.22. and the units are angstroms. Angstroms has a unit of an A with a little zero on the top. Now we're gonna subtract off the lab value of 6562.8 and the same units, angstroms. Now we're gonna divide this also by the 6562, which happens to be the same wavelength value measured in the lab. Units, once again, are angstroms. Since we have very similar wavelength letters, we can go ahead and cancel like letters. In this case, they're angstroms. Angstroms on the top divide with angstroms on the bottom, and all we're going to be left with is a number. There's no units left. Redshift does not have any units. It is a unitless number. So we need to calculate this out. So we need to take 6585.22. If we go to our calculator on Google, 65, it is 6585.22. And we want to subtract off 6562.8. equals, and then we want to divide it by the same value, 6562.8. Let's check it. It says 6562.8, we hit equal, and we have a value of 0 .003416. Let's put that in there, 0 0.003416. Let's calculate our number of significant digits. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five. So let's choose five significant digits because that's the fewest of five or six. And we have one, two, three, four, so we need another digit after six. So it's three, four, one, six, two. And that will give us the correct number of significant digits. And that is our redshift parameter value Z. So that's solved for A. Now to solve for B, B is the velocity in units of kilometers per second. Well Z is equal to the radial velocity divided by the speed of light. 
we already know z, we can substitute that in. z is 0 0.00. .00. 34162 and that's got to be equal to the radial velocity which is what we want to calculate and divided by the speed of light which is given by approximately 3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second and you can look that up in Google it is a constant Now all we need to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second. Cancel values, cancel units, cancel numbers, and multiply what we can't cancel. So we multiply both sides of the equation by 3 times 10 to the fifth kilometers per second and we look for things that we can cancel before we decide to multiply it out. I'll go get my green crayon again. On the right hand side we've got a 3 times 10 to the fifth because it cancels with 3 times 10 to the fifth. We've got letters of kilometers per second which cancels with letters kilometers per second. The only thing we're left with on the right hand side is V radial which is what we want to calculate. On the left hand side we've got this redshift parameter 0 0.0034162 and we want to multiply it by 3 times 10 to the fifth. Well here's our redshift parameter so the only thing we need to do is multiply it by 3 ee5 and we get a value of 1024.9 1024.9 let's go ahead and calculate our significant digits here we've got a 3, and we can, it's exact, 3.0000, so we can keep it as 1024.9, and the units are going to be kilometers per second. So this is what we calculate the redshift velocity for the Sombrero Galaxy in units of kilometers per second. Now the last thing we want to know is whether this is galaxy motion towards or away from us. Is the Sombrero Galaxy moving towards us or is the Sombrero Galaxy moving away from us? Well since we have a positive value for radial velocity and we have a positive value for Z, since it's positive, positive is defined as a redshift and a redshift is when galaxies are moving away from us. So not only do we have a redshift as V radial is greater than zero, so the answer is going to be away. The Sombrero Galaxy is moving away from us. Most galaxies are moving away from us, and hence we call this Z value a redshift parameter, indicating that most galaxies are moving away from us. Even though we may find a negative number indicating the galaxy is moving towards us, we still call Z a redshift parameter. Now notice that our Z value is very small. It is much less than 1. So this is the speed that the galaxy is moving towards us or away from us. In this particular case, it is away from us at a speed of 1024.5 kilometers per second.